Let's have a look at an example of solving an equation that has complex roots. And the general theory is that any algebraic equation of the form a0 plus a1z plus a2z squared through to a n z to the n equals 0, that is any polynomial where the coefficients a0, a1 through to an can either be purely real numbers or also any complex numbers. The fundamental theorem of algebra says any such equation has n solutions. So today we'll have a look at an example of solving one of these where the solutions are actually complex numbers. So the equation we're going to look at is z to the 4 plus 2z squared plus 4 equals 0. And the method of solving equations varies, but here you'll notice that all the powers of z are even. So we could actually think of this as being z squared all squared plus 2z squared plus 4 equals 0. And hence we could make a substitution here. Let w equals z squared and initially rewrite this equation therefore in the form w squared plus 2w plus 4 equals 0. The next step would then be to solve for w and we could do this using the quadratic formula. Here that would become w equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 all divided by 2 times 1 and that would then give us w equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 divided by 2. Now the square root of negative 12 is just square root of 12 times j. So that's going to become negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12j divided by 2. And we could actually simplify this a bit further. Square root of 12 could be rewritten as 2 times the square root of 3. And so you can see then that in fact the 2's are going to cancel there, giving us solutions w equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 times j. However, in turn, w is equal to z squared, and it's z we're actually solving for. So what we've actually found then is z equals negative 1 plus the square root of 3 times j. Or we also have z squared equal to negative 1 minus the square root of 3 times j. And the first thing we should do from here is then rewrite these in polar form. And in polar form, negative 1 plus the square root of 3 times j works out to be 2 cis 2 pi on 3. And negative 1 minus the square root of 3 times j works out to be 2 cis negative 2 pi on 3, where the angle is made with the positive x-axis and 2 is the magnitude of the complex number. So having a look at these, we're then basically needing to find the two square roots of 2 cis 2 pi on 3 to find two of the solutions to our equation and the square roots of 2 cis negative 2 pi on 3 to find the other two. So looking first of all at z squared equals 2 cis 2 pi on 3, then that will have square roots will both have magnitude root 2 and the first one the angle will be halved since we're looking at square roots so the first one will be square root of 2 times cis pi on 3 and square roots are always pi radians apart so therefore the second one will be the square root of 2 cis pi on 3 plus pi which will work out to be the square root of 2 cis 4 pi on 3 so those will be the solutions following from the first one. While with the second one, z squared equals 2 cis negative 2 pi on 3, it'll be a similar principle. Again, both the solutions to that, which are the square roots of this, will have magnitude root 2, and the first one will be halving this angle to get square root of 2 cis negative pi on 3, and again, the second one will be adding pi onto that, giving square root of 2 cis 2 pi on 3. So we now actually have our four solutions for z in polar form. While these are the solutions, if we preferred, we could also always, of course, rewrite these in Cartesian form, as, for example, with the first one. For instance, in Cartesian form, that would be square root of 2 times cos pi on 3 plus j sine pi on 3 which when expanded, for instance, would work us out to give us the square root of 2 times a half, which is the square root of 2 on 2, 
plus j times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 on 2, which would give us square root of 6 on 2 times j. And you could, of course, work out similar things for the other ones if you wanted them in Cartesian form also. This is an example of how we can solve a complex equation of this form.